Oh my lord. Wow. Uh, this is going to kind of suck. Holy Jesus. Wow. Oh my god, look at the snow on that thing. Whoa. We're just getting buried out here in central Iowa. Yeah, I think it's just time to go into the shop and play with the radios. That's what I think. Hi, this is Gene from Listening In Radio. Welcome to another installment of uh, Listening In. Uh, what have I been up to for the last uh, few weeks? Well, I've actually, uh, with winter months being what they are, and now we're buried under about uh, 11 inches of snow or, or so and more on the way, um, I've been spending the uh, the colder months and uh, getting into a short wave, but also uh, getting into uh, building crystal sets. And as you can see here, here's a couple of... Uh, a couple of models I built over the last couple of months. I've been a very busy boy with uh, uh, with this building. It's it's just awesome stuff. It's a classical gas uh, walk through the past and coming back to understand a basic circuit of how things work and how energy works and how our RF works. Um, spent a lot of time winding the coils. You know, I think I think it's very easy to fall in love with a crystal set because when you make one, you know. It's kind of like touching a beautiful woman in a way. And they can have the same effect on your wallet. And I think that the, the reason that the uh, crystal sets are uh, so sexy, if you want to call them that, is, you know, you spend a lot of time with these radios winding uh, the coil. This one was particularly uh, interesting. Uh, the wire on this is called Litz wire, which is a very um, fine thread-like wire uh, wrapped in a cloth um, casing. It's very interesting. This actually took me uh, a few days to wind uh, because it was so intricate uh, that I really had to take my time to try to get it right. And I, I actually did it in shifts over a number of days where I'd come in and I'd give it about 15 minutes and it really took that long. I'd work on it about 15 minutes and I would uh, put it down for a while, take a break, uh, come back, put in another 15 or 20. So this actually took me a long time Long time to wrap, uh, so it was a really interesting radio. Uh, this particular coil was uh, different. I actually started out with this coil, and I was going to put it on on this platform here, uh, but it didn't work out initially, so I went back and redid it. So this one was a little bit more simple because it didn't take up as much time uh, to do, but shaping it and getting it right uh, mounted on, on uh, the uh, base here uh, was a little tedious, but it worked out in... Uh, this is all copper fittings that I put on here. But anyway, um, these are pretty typical of uh, homemade crystal sets in the classic sense. But the one I want to point out to you is this one in the middle. And you're probably wondering, oh, well, what's that? Uh, that's completely different. I had found this uh, on eBay uh, because I was uh, looking to um, buy some parts to make some more radios. And I found this particular uh, crystal set on eBay. And it was from a, a vendor called um, Hometown Hometown Sale 11 on eBay. So that was the username. And they carry shortwave useful parts um, and kits on eBay uh, for um, crystal sets, uh, various really interesting parts, little amplifiers for your headphones uh, so you can uh, use both uh, headphones, uh, different impedance headphones and 8-ohm headphones. And so that was kind of interesting. Um to say the least. And I want to talk about uh, the parts a little bit. Let me explain the, the parts on this as best that I can. And I hope you can see this. Um, let me try and get you a better, a little bit of a better shot on this from the top so you can see what's going on. So you have here the, the, the antenna, a ground. Uh, you have your, your coil like you would on any crystal set radio. So that is the coil. This button here is kind of interesting because it changes the impedance for the headphones. So you could use different headphones. You have a tuning knob or a variable capacitor. And you have an actual headphone jack. As well as both these posts on each side, uh, the stand, which actually makes up the stand. If you kind of look, I'll show the backs of other shortwave. I'm sorry, uh, not shortwave listeners. Well, shortwave listeners and, you know, AM listeners um, and crystal radio enthusiasts can see what's going on here. And you can see from the path... Uh, of the circuit on the board where it goes to and those these the stand on it actually acts uh, it's functional as well 
So you can connect your antenna here, and you can also use the earphone jack, and as well as mounting the earphone on these posts too, you can pick it up here. Uh, here is here is the uh, the crystal here, the operating crystal. You have a uh, looks like a uh, resistor at this point, and this looks like it's some type of capacitors. I think there's a couple capacitors on the board, but don't quote me on that. I'm I'm a little bit a uh, little bit behind on my on my parts for these, but I did look them up. They appear to be capacitors. So this is a really interesting radio, uh, to say the least. So the radio, uh, the model is, and I hope you can see this pretty well. Maybe, 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 maybe not. It's the uh, model RK70, and or 7D. I apologize, RK70 reversion or uh, revision 5.0. Uh, so this is something to look up on eBay, and I'll give you some more details in just a second here. So when I brought this radio online, I put the uh, antenna on it and a set of headphones and started listening to it. I actually um, filtered it through a couple pieces of equipment I had for uh, to get a better signal in and to get better audio out on, on the other end because I have an audio amplifier and uh, uh, an electronic clarifier to kind of filter out some of the noise on the audio end. And it actually worked worked pretty well, though, you know, I could only hear the strong local stations. There's two very close to me to kind of, you know, wipe everything out, everything else out. But I would certainly like to get into a situation where maybe I'm out in a rural area and... Uh, uh, take a listen to it to see how many stations I could pull in without that uh, close station interference. So the other thing that came to mind uh, for me when I looked at this radio was uh, the question I asked is, uh, I wonder how this would work under uh, the stress of an EMP or an electromagnetic pulse. And I guess, you know, when I kind of started up listening in radio, I was focusing a little bit on things like um, expedient survival radio, emergency radios, uh, uh, expedient antennas, uh, stealthy antennas, you know, things we could, we could use in an emergency uh, easily without carrying a lot of batteries. And I, I think, quite honestly, uh, this radio, uh, again, this is the uh, RK7D, I, I think it does a pretty good job, and I think it would be a good backpack companion, though uh, the question of EMP, and I know it's a crazy question, and I, I I just wanted to throw it out there to see what other uh, crystal radio enthusiasts thought. So I went to a page. I'm, I'm part of a, a Facebook page called Basic Crystal Radios, and it's on, on Facebook. And they uh, have about 25,000 members. It's really, it's really got a huge following. Um, and I, I like to throw the question out because a lot of the people who dabble in this stuff, they're, they're techni technicians and they're radio engineers and uh, people who built these things. So I, I like to ask the questions because those are the people who have the boots on the ground, you know, so to speak, with, with these with these sets. And they, you know, they build them from scratch like I did. And some of them are pretty great. And they, they, they pass a lot of information back and forth on how to tweak these, what to listen to. But I asked the question and I just simply said, so I, I want to ask a crazy question. Uh, how do you think this particular model radio would hold up in an EMP? Well, I got a lot of varying questions. I think the, the overarching answer that I got from uh, the members of the Basic uh, Crystal Radio set or uh, Basic Crystal Radio Facebook page, I, I should say, um, was that, yes, it, it, because it has electronic parts on it, it could be affected by an EMP. Um, and those answers varied uh, to the point of, well, it is possible that if, the, if it was shielded, like any other radio, if you had it in a shielded place, or you didn't have the antenna attached, it is very possible that this sort of uh, rudimentary radio could survive an EMP. There is a chance uh, if it wasn't hooked up. And there's some truism uh, where that's concerned because if you don't have a ground and an antenna hooked up to a crystal set radio, what you basically hear is nothing. There is absolute, there's absolute nothing. So uh, it could be, that could be, but again, it has electronic parts on it. So would it be affected by EMP? I guess the, the best answer that I could come up with for this would be 50-50. But of course, something like this, or if you're carrying some field expedient radios with you, this should probably go into, if you have a metal box, to, you know, to protect it. But the upside of this radio is that it has no battery. 
It does not require a battery. It is operated by a field of energy from a radio station or other interference or whatever whatever RF energy, because you'll hear everything. You'll hear the interference. You'll hear uh, radio stations. You might hear multiple radio stations, but you will hear something when you have the ground and antenna hooked up to it, and you'll hear it pretty well on this one. So this is pretty pretty interesting radio. And would I recommend this to a backpacker? Yeah, this would be a great radio if you were mountaineering or you were in the wilderness, something to throw into a plastic box to protect it because it does have, it's pretty well made, but you know, obviously it's, it's on the circuit board and it, it probably could be cracked or whatever if it was you know, smashed inside a backpack or a suitcase or something like that. So putting it into a, a metal box to protect it or putting it into a, a plastic box to protect it with a few feet of wire for your ground, and your antenna, and again, when you operate a crystal set radio, the uh, the ground and the antenna are like really important. Particularly, particularly the ground. I found I find that sometimes uh, the crystal sets I built, it'll still hear without the ground. In fact, I think the ground, this particular radio here, I think I think the ground actually uh, creates more incoming signal, so it, it draws more signal in. But that's you know what it should do. So again, here you go. This is uh, the RK seven D uh, revision five point oh. I think it's really an interesting uh, piece of equipment. Uh, I'm going to keep dabbling with it to see what else I can make it do, but I think it's something that would be uh, useful. Absolutely. All right. All right. Thanks for your time. This is Gene from Listening and Radio, KB9001MWDX, KB9001SWR, SWR, SWL, SSB, and of course my ham radio call sign, WN9CWC. I'll be shoveling and pushing a lot of snow over the next couple of days. We got buried. All right. Thanks. Have a good one. Be safe.